Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the Future Is Now podcast. I'm excited for today's episode. I am talking with Dave Ryan Cook, and I'm really excited because I also had my friend Caleb Phobes come on, and we had a very good conversation about worship. Now, David Cook is uh, hes a worship pastor at Oceans Church, and he's also with SEU Worship. They just had an incredible album come out called Move of God, and uh, it really is just kind of sweeping across uh, the world right now and, and getting insane amount of downloads and plays, and so you probably already listened to it. But I'm really uh, happy to have this conversation with them. You know, we talked about all the things that matter in worship, uh, big worship culture, big church, small church, how it plays into our everyday life. And so I know that you're going to be blessed by the conversation. Um, it was an incredible time that we got to spend with him. Uh, as always, make sure that you guys are doing all the things. You're subscribing, you're liking, you're leaving it a review for the podcast. I'm very thankful that you guys are choosing um, to continue following along with this ministry. It means the world to me. Um, but I'm not going to stop any more of your time. I'm not going to waste it. We're just going to jump into this conversation. So get your hearts and your minds ready for today's episode. Um, I was curious though, if, cause I feel like people have calls on their life, right? I got saved at 16, but then I kind of prophesied over about pastoring all that later on. So I am curious, you know, where mm. that happened for you. Like, did you always know you wanted to be in worship? Mm. Is that something? Cause I feel like generally worship leaders, they, they know it for a long time. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, honestly, I, my dad's a pastor. I grew up in the church and so it was always around music was always around you know what you would call worship so to speak in terms of like a church culture and the value you know of you know what it is to a service and also to just like an overall movement but I was really into sports growing up so I was loved basketball played soccer and baseball I, you know, I was like, man, I, I really want to go after one of those if I can, if I'm good enough as yeah. I get older, you know. And, um, you know, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I, I was I was pretty good. I was pretty good, <laughs> you know. Had some high hopes. What was your best? Um, well, I ended up, soccer was, was really something I was really passionate about. Baseball was something I was really passionate about. I'm not, you know, the tallest guy in the world. And so yeah. when everybody else had their massive growth spurts, like their six footers, I'm still kind of hanging around five feet. And yep. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe it's going to look a little different for me. My soccer coach in high school was like, hey, um, I need you to do cross country mm -hmm. in the off season. It'll get you conditioned and ready for soccer season in the winter. I was like, okay. And I ended up joining the team and I, I ended up being like really good at it. Yeah. And that ended up being like the thing I like went full on after mm -hmm. all throughout high school. Um, and so for a minute there, I was like, maybe I want to go after like, you know, a scholarship thing with yeah. cross country. I got fully wrecked by God at the age of like 16. Yeah. And I had had moments with God encounters at youth camps growing up, but it wasn't until this moment at 16 that I really surrendered my mm -hmm. life to the Lord. And it was just, it was a personal revelation of like, okay, I love you, Jesus. And I want to live for you with all my life. When that happened, I stopped hanging out with this whole different friend group and the new friend group I started hanging with were these like Jesus freaks at my high school. <laughs> and all they did was like worship. Our weekends, our Friday and Saturday nights, we'd like spend it at somebody's living room until curfew when their parents were like, you gotta go home. And that's where I started to realize, like I sang growing up, you know, mm -hmm. if your dad's a pastor, you're gonna have to sing at some point. Yep. And I always felt like I had a good voice, but it was never something that I was like, I feel called to this until I really surrendered my life to God. And I discovered like, this is more than just a fun thing I get to do. This is something right. that I feel called yep. to do with my life. So that's where it really changed. And I really started to actually pursue it, pray after it and really kind of give my intentionality to getting better at it. That makes sense. And I know that Caleb, I know we've talked because I feel like, and, and, and I, before I wouldn't attribute different callings to like worship and songwriting, but I feel like there are people that prefer one or the other. Yep. Mm -hmm. And like you, you prefer, what do you, because we talked about how you like songwriting. You yeah. Like the I process mean, of it. I'm way good with just being in the background. Like I f there's so many talented worship leaders and I, I feel like I'm a good worship leader, but I love just 
creating that space for other people to flourish. And I'm way good with playing keys and running tracks and music directing the band and also songwriting. Like, yeah, just it's a very, very big passion of mine just to help resource the local church. Yeah. And not necessarily like, I'm sure one day maybe I'll do something like with my name attached to it. But right now I feel like I've been graced and blessed just to like help resource other people who have a lot of vision for that mm. in their uh, areas of ministry. Um, so that's kind of the doors that the Lord's been opening up for me just to like bless other ministries um, and that gift and their calling. Is, <laughs> I always wonder this cause I don't, I'm like, you know, I sing, but I'm not good, you know? And uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, but I always wonder, like, I think if, if somebody wants to serve in a specific area, you know, I think it's an easy conversation to be like, hey, you know, you're not the best at this. Why don't you move over here? Right. Like worship leaders have the worst job in the world yes. when it comes to that, because like, <laughs> I think that's one of the most unaware people yeah. are sometimes about, yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to sing and I want to be yes. a worship leader. But like one of the prerequisites of that yeah. is that you have a good voice in the sense of leading from a stage. And I laughed because I heard, uh, I heard somebody say last week I was at this church and uh, the pastor said like, it's, it's great if that's your hobby, but a gift mm -hmm. is different than a hobby. Yeah, yeah. So, so it is, Absolutely. I guess in the sense of the two, like worship leading, do you either have it or you don't? Mm. And then songwriting, is that something that also is very natural or is it something that can be taught in your guys' opinion? Mm. I think it's a space you can grow in for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I think some people have the natural gift of like worship leading and maybe not necessarily like, the gift of songwriting yeah. yet but i think you know the more rooms you're in the as much as you stay humble you know the lord kind of blesses those rooms to you know flourish in your gifting mm -hmm. a little bit more but yeah i definitely some people got both some people mm. got one or the other yeah i have learned that you've got to understand the, there's so many different parts that make the body function. Yeah. Yes. Not every not everybody can be, you know, the Michael Jordan or LeBron James of songwriting or worship leading. Even though that's what you would hope for mm -hmm. and maybe that's kind of what you were maybe even told growing up that you were. One of the best things you can ever do with your gifting is to bring it into an arena where there are many others present. Yep. And allow them allow your gifting to be sort of submitted to the natural elements of community. Yeah. Cuz that starts to weed out uh, the practicalities and reveal the reality of maybe where your gifting yeah. or your passion actually truly like stacks mm -hmm. up against just other great people. The best thing I ever did was get around a lot of people that were so much better than me. Yeah. And though that brought to the surface my insecurities and my inadequacies and just sort of like my own, like battling with my own self-esteem, self-confidence, it, gave me something to aspire to and yeah. be inspired for. And without that, I would have never realized that there was like another bar of excellence or standard that was set that I could actually like reach towards to just practically get better. Spiritually, you know, I love the kingdom of God. I love the house of God. There is a space for everybody. And I, I encourage people that all the time. When it comes to the cross, it's level ground. Yeah, yeah. God is no respecter of persons. What he mm -hmm. can do for one, he can do for you. However, I do believe some people are truly just given a gift. Mm -hmm. You know, call it the X factor, call it the anointing, whatever you want. There is something special on certain people that is so obvious and evident. Does that always mean that it will equate to, you know, a globalized popularity? No. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that if you're faithful to the call that God's placed on your life, which looks like a local responsibility to serve people and to build something like the church of God, I think that starts to equate to a local sense of vision and buy-in where there is growth. Yeah. Where there is an overflow of like the ministry of the Holy Spirit through whatever you're doing, whether it's writing your songs, you know. And so I think it varies. But right. as a worship pastor, worship leader, dealing with people whose skill sets vary across the spectrum, you always got to be sensitive. There is no mm -hmm. one-size-fits-all conversation to have with people. You've got to be very pastoral in the sense of, just knowing people's background, knowing some yeah. of their triggers. What are your past hurts? Is this something you've dealt with for a long time? And if I don't handle this with sensitivity, 
could I really, really crush your soul right now? Yes. You got to learn how to have those conversations. But at the end of the day, you do, you are responsible to being able to be honest with people. You know, I don't want to enable your fantasy. Yeah. I want to also be real with like, hey, I love that you're passionate about this. Your passion about this doesn't necessarily mean that you are the chosen one for it. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that if you are passionate about what you're dreaming about, the end result you really want, let me encourage you to be just as passionate about your practicing, making it perfected, to be something that we can trust in a room full of people where your responsibility is to lead them, not just in the spirit, but also in a practical gift that is somewhat attractive that people want to be led by. Yeah. I don't want to be led by somebody who can't hold a note. Yeah. It's distracting. Mm -hmm. And that's, we're not taking away anything of like the power of God by just being practical about like, hey, when it comes to the responsibility yep. of the body, uh, we want to do this with excellence. When it comes to you and your bedroom singing to the Lord, bro, have at it. Yeah. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make a joyful noise all you want, right. my guy. Um, but there are levels to this when it comes to something that if you're dreaming about being some globally recognized worship mm -hmm. leader, um, you are going to have to put in the unseen hours that it takes to get to a place where people are like, not only can I trust that, but it's something that I want to actually platform. Yeah. And if we, like, if we really, we preach this all the time, like, okay, it's, it's the same thing. Like a worship leader on stage is just as important as somebody at a door greeting. Like, and if we, I think if we really actually believe that, yep. then that has to be shown in the way that we lead people and we do ministry. And so That's like great, yeah. what something that we're dealing with right now, at least in the young adult ministry is you know, instead of, okay, we have a guy that comes in that's insane at drums and it's like the temptation is, all right, we'll slow him up there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. let's get him up there like yeah. next week. But but I think if, if we really care for the discipleship of people and and so what we're thinking about now is like, okay, I get it. if you have a great voice and saying all these giftings, whatever, yeah. let's still have a process of, yes. or anybody that wants to audition for the worship team or anything like, let's have a process that you go through and you you figure out lighting you like you do this a week and you shadow lighting, you shadow sound, right. you you're at the door, you're doing all of these different things. Yeah. Because if we really equate all the value the same, yeah. then we have to realize that even if it doesn't work on stage, right. you can be an expert in so many other things. And so like, that's good, something that I learned like off the bat mm -hmm. is because like just stepping into a role where you just think about things that I don't think about before. I never thought about the lighting technicians before when I was sitting in a service. Now that I'm looking at everything in a service, I go back there and I'm talking to our guys and I, I realize like, oh, you guys are, this is a skill oh, yeah. Yeah. and not even a skill, but it's a gift. Yes. And just the same as somebody that has an insane voice or musical ability or great, songwriting, yeah. there's a gifting for sound engineering. Yes. There's a gifting for lighting technicians. There's a gifting for ushers and, and being a, so, so it's not a matter of like, oh, if if everybody wants to just get on the platform, right. you know, I don't think that's on them. I think that's on us yeah, yeah, absolutely. in the way that we present our ministry. It's so mm -hmm. that's a great point. I think about it all the time. I'm so thankful for the ministry of the disciples, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were recording history. Were they necessarily the main characters mm -hmm. in the story? Not all the time, Yeah. but without their eyewitness accounts of the life and ministry of Jesus, where would we be when it comes to our walk with mm -hmm. even being able to follow Jesus? They were the, they were right there on site. And I tell that to our team all the time at home. If you're behind a camera, <laughs> if yep. you're, wherever you're at, bro, you are recording history. Mm -hmm. And in generations to come, if it weren't for the work of your hands to see the kingdom advance through the lens that you get to capture this, um, we won't have evidence yep. of what God is doing in his church locally and globally to be able to teach the generations to come, look at what the Lord has done. Yeah. You can do it too. And so that is the value, whether you're behind a camera, a soundboard, if you are in the lobby at the welcome desk, if you're just somebody who's running a small group, whatever it might be, you are doing your due diligence at not only building the church, but you're part of making history. And sometimes history, the way it's recorded, it's not always these moments on a platform. 99% of it is the mundane hallway chats. Yep. The moments in the car, in the driveway, dropping somebody off after service, having the chat about what God did with them. Yeah. Whatever it might be, man, I think about it all the time. Like out of all the hours of my week, literally Monday through Saturday, only about four to 
five, maybe six hours out of, I think the 196 hours that make up a seven day week are spent on a platform. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at this at a practical perspective, if only like a hundred, only six of my hours are on a platform, don't you think God is way <laughs> more interested in the 188 other hours yeah. of mm -hmm. what I'm doing with my week? That is good. If we are taking care of our off platform activity, God will, it's a byproduct that the on platform activity will be something that he not only blesses, but that he really loves to use for his glory. But it's the off platform activity I think that is, is a major key to anything being something that can break through that, you know, people outside of my own network mm -hmm. will start to take notice of. If you take care of the local man, yeah, God's breath, when he breathes on something, like that's up to him. Mm. Oh, let yeah. the chips fall where they may. Yeah. Yeah. But if I'm loving the people in these seats, if I'm writing songs about the testimonies coming out of these seats, um, man, I think, I think God's really gonna bless that mm -hmm. here in the rooms that he's given me authority. And if he wants to take that outside the four walls, so cool yeah but if not we got to get to a place where we are just content with stewarding the thing that our eyes can actually see and our hands can actually touch yeah, yeah. we get in love with the stuff that we don't know about we've never been to we're creating for that we're missing the point there are people in our seats that are just so desperate and hungry for the ministry of the lord that we have been given the authority to actually release and you know really lead them in you know that's what that's what we were talking about in the car with you caleb where we're joking about like all the different pastoral leadership conversations that you have to have with people. And that's just, I think yeah. that's just a, a side of ministry that not a lot of people will see, mm -hmm. right? They see the stage, they see the preaching, they see all of that. But at the end of the day, it's like, there is so much beyond that of correction, of pastoring, yes. of caring, yeah. of just general in involvement. And at the end of the day, if we are pastors and we are, like you're saying, caring for people, it's like, are we developing, you know, from a worship standpoint or a leadership standpoint? Um, I always think like, okay, so I have leaders that do all these different tasks and is my ultimate goal for them mm. that they would be really good at what their job is at church or is my ultimate goal for them that they would be who God has called them to be? So mm. it's like the focus is, are they becoming a better person? Right. Like, are they becoming a better follower of right. Jesus? And mm -hmm. I think that's if the aim is that, then that's when you're, what, what you're saying is that the ministry gets so much healthier. It does. Rather than musicians that play a great worship set and then they're just arguing in the back yeah. and there's no unity. Ego. And, ego. Yeah. and I, I think you maybe you can speak to that too because I feel like it, it, any platform, I mean, even if you're a pastor speaking on stage, anybody from the platform has a disposition and an opportunity more than others to get a big ego. Yeah. Um, so so how, have, how have you kind of not battled in a sense that, but but protected yourself from it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important that you stay low. Um, you know, all over the New Testament, it talks about like staying humble, mm -hmm. stay fearful. Um, you know, don't let a new young believer teach the word because they'll become prideful. Right. Right. So I think you have to be okay with taking it slow mm. and going through a process like what you were saying earlier. Um, and really being rooted in the secret place, um, because that's, that's where the anointing lies, right? Yeah. If, if you're not rooted in a secret place, if you're not in the word, uh, then how can you know his voice? How can you be sensitive to his leading? Um, and then at that point, you know, it's, it can be karaoke. It can be, <laughs> yeah. People are extremely talented and it sounds amazing. It looks amazing, but it, there's just no feel. Yes, And that feel is the presence of God. Yes, And um, when you walk into a room, there could be one guy who knows like three chords on a guitar, but he's anointed yes. to do it. Yeah. Um, and the room shifts and there could be a full, fully stacked team of amazing singers and vocalists and, you know, bandmates. But if they lack the anointing, then it's like, what's the point of even doing this? Yeah, yeah, that is that is one of like the cool and frustrating parts of, I feel like in so many areas, God is simple and he's also frustratingly mysterious. And so yeah. like the anointing <laughs> is one of those things where it's like, it is. you can't really formulate into words what about a person is yeah. it, but like you're saying, we've all experienced both yeah. sides. We've yeah. experienced sitting in a room and we're watching somebody lead or watch and you're like, wow, this person is anointed. And yeah. it's nothing that we can 
there's no metric about it. It's yeah. just like you just see the anointing. And then likewise, you guys have probably experienced way more than I have, but I've been in rooms where I'm like, man, their voice is like, they're great singers, yeah. but it doesn't feel like they're a worship leader. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, so yeah. It, it's it's an interesting distinction yeah. like to, to experience both sides of that. Oh, it yeah. is, bro. The, the, it, it's the power, it's mm-hmm. the power of God. And when, I, when I'm in a room where somebody is operating under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's upon their life, there, it's the power of the living God at work in the room. It's the breath of God breathing yep. onto something. There's a, there's a, you can do things under the anointing that you can't do <laughs> yeah. in your own strength. When, when we read scripture, these people doing these miraculous acts, uh, it's under the anointing of God that's on yeah. their life. It, it's supernatural. Mm-hmm. It can't be, you know, explained sometimes. Yeah. And like you said, that is the mystery that comes with just like exchange, surrendering your life to the call of God, but really being transformed in his likeness. I think you're most anointed when you're most like Jesus. Right. Yeah. Because Jesus is the anointed one and he's perfect in it. And we get little glimpses of heaven when people operate under the anointing of God that's on their lives Mm -hmm. and they're flowing in that. That's why you're in a room and all of a sudden you sense that shift. Yep. What shifts a room? It's people under the anointing, not out of their gifting. There's a lot of, we're in a day and age now, you know, it's so accessible to the world being able to be taught, trained. Mm -hmm. Like you can YouTube anything these days and become somewhat of a, you know, amateur expert at whatever it is you want to go after. So we got a lot of killer singers. We got a lot of killer musicians. I mean, people are better than ever in this day and age. Um, but you can never, ever forsake what it is to spend time with the Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would come upon yeah. your life. Yeah. I'll take somebody who's um, a little rough around the edges in their skill set, but they're fully submitted to the Lordship yep. of Jesus yeah. Christ in their lives. Hundred percent over somebody who like is a yeah. self-proclaimed expert. And yeah, dude, you can wow a crowd but you have not moved the heart of God. Mm-hmm. Well, and if you're not interested in moving the heart of God first, then you will only live for the moment where somebody affirms the gifting that you have. Yeah. Where when you're under the anointing, you're not, you're not visible anymore. Right. It's obvious that God is in the room and so all good. eyes should be upon him. The, the image of Jesus is made visible he is the image of the invisible God. Yeah. And so when those things are at work in, in the room, um, that, that's the kind of stuff I, I, I want to give my life to. Man. Totally. Personally, but also to like raise up in others, to inspire them, to chase and pursue the Lord and to truly, you know, obtain the power of God on your life. Um, it's to be more like Jesus. That's so good. In prayer, in yeah. preparation, in the worship of my life. Everything I do with my time has the potential of worship. Yeah. Yeah, And it's either going to go to some inanimate object or it's going to go to the living God that created me. Yeah. He deserves it. So I love what you said about you need to be more like Jesus. Because I could, as a young leader, as a lo- young worship leader, I could look at David and be like, oh, I want to be more like David. Mm-hmm. And David's so anointed in what he does. But if I try to copy David, I'm not going to have David's anointing. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? I'm going to have anointing when I spend time with Jesus. Yep. Yes. And I... I develop my own gifting, my yes. own anointing. Um, I feel like we've been talking about like imposter syndrome yeah. a little bit, like yeah. the last few days. And so many people are just like, oh, I want to be like this guy. I want to mm-hmm. be like this guy. And they're just like copying all these people. And, but they don't, they haven't developed their own, like who they are in Christ. Yes. And and it's so evident when you lead, if you're not operating like as yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. One of the most powerful things somebody said to me uh, when I was younger and, you know, I meant well, very passionate about worship. Yeah. It took me a while to learn what that is, though. Because in the early days, it was like, I, I, I'm just passionate about music. Right. <laughs> I love right, music. Right. I'm a fan of it. I love making it. I love being around it. I love going to live shows. I just love music and I love God. So I think I'm passionate about worship. And then, you know, you don't know what you don't know, but you get to grow up a bit. And I remember there's this guy. Um, and it's funny now because it's come full circle for me. I've been able to use this same example to other young worship leaders that have been in my world. But he sat me down one time and he's like, I'd really love to hear David Cook lead worship sometime. <laughs> and I was like, 
what are you talking you, about? <laughs> what do you mean, man? Like, yeah, we, we've been in the same room so many times together, you know, like, what are you talking about? And he's like, no, 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 I've heard, I've, I've heard you lead, you leading, but I, I don't feel like I've heard you leading. And he's like, I've heard you do your best, like Joel Houston impression. <laughs> I've heard you like give your best go at like a Phil Wickham vibe, this and that. But like, I'd really love to hear David Cookley worship one day. And he just started to talk to me about what it is to just truly get comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. And the identity that Christ has has made uniquely for you. And just to be comfortable being yourself, be inspired by the people that inspire you. Yeah. But don't try and copycat what they're doing. You can't copy somebody else's flow. Mm -hmm. You can. It won't feel at all like the thing that inspired you to want to recreate it. Yeah. Because it was the moment. There was a. The, you can't live in somebody else's revelation, bro. Yep. You got to get your own. If yep. you don't have your own, you're going to spend your life being a second best JV version of whoever you, you know, first got inspired by. And so you got to get... No secondhand glory, bro. You got to get your own so firsthand good. account yeah, so good. in order for it to be like obviously real yes. when you're leading. It's like God gave that to you. Mm -hmm. Brandon Lake didn't give that to you. Chandler Moore didn't give that to you. Right. That wasn't an elevation, you know, impersonation. That was God gave you that revelation and you can feel the power that's upon it. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. operating out of your identity in that's Christ. That's so good. And that, I mean... You said it so well, it, and it's cool that you're saying this now because whenever somebody listens to one of your songs, it's so David Ryan Cook, mm. and it's like that's totally who you are mm. and your style and your anointing and the worship, and it's it's a style that is so unique. Mm. And so in in the past, it's like you know, yeah, you you're not this person though they are great. You're sure. not this person though they are great. Absolutely. And now you've come to a place where now people are in a spot where they're like, oh, I would love to have what David Ryan Cook has, but it's cool because you're in yeah. a spot yeah. where you're like, no, 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 like I had to go through that forming process too. And yes. I, I just love that it, it in James 5, you know, uh, it's talking about prayer. And I love how he talks about, you know, Elijah prayed for it to stop raining for three years and it did. And then he yeah. prayed for it to rain. And it's just, but, but James makes a, uh, makes it known that, hey, by the way, Elijah is just like you guys. Yeah. You know, and I think it's yes. cool because I think it's a good snowball effect on yeah. either side. Either you try and copy somebody your entire life and you're just missing it because everything is theory to you and imagination yes. and you can't really capture it. Or you really step out and you really trust the Lord and you let him shape the identity that he has for you. Yes. And then all of a sudden you realize like, oh, this has nothing to do with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like it has nothing to do with the way that I speak or the way that I sing and all these things. It has, it all, it, everything mm. has to do with the anointing of God, which comes from the Lord. And yes. the more that you step into that, I'm sure you've, you've recognized that is the more that you trust him of like, oh, he's the one that that carries this whole thing. Yeah. And if I were to just trust him, then I can be like people in figures in the Bible, people in real life and ministry that I respect so much. Yeah. Because what you would respect about somebody isn't necessarily all the the giftings that God is giving them. What you respect and, and appreciate about people is the anointing, yes. which is what we're talking about. Yes. And that only comes from the Lord. Amen. It doesn't come from anywhere else. No. And you can't get it from anywhere else. No, no. There's so many counterfeits out there that we have fallen for. Humans love the gift. Mm -hmm. We are obsessed with it. Look at the world. You know, something goes viral and all of a sudden, like, that's our new movie star. We love to pursue that 15 minutes of fame, but it, it, it's so fleeting. It's so fleeting. Yep. Whatever is born of the flesh must be sustained by the flesh. Mm -hmm. But whatever is born of the spirit, it's sustained by the spirit. And when we're flowing from spirit-born revelation and vision, it's for lack of vision the people perish. Yep. So if there's a lack of vision, what's going on then? It's a bunch of people striving in their own strength yeah. to try and sustain something that they started on their own. Mm -hmm. That's exhausting. What's yep. that gonna what's that gonna result in? Burnout, addiction, rehabilitation, all of these things that you're depending upon in your own way. When you truly surrender and let the Lord have his way in your life. The spirit of God gives birth to vision. Yep. The word of God is alive. You read it, it starts to come alive to you and it starts to translate in the unique signature revelation that's meant for your life. Yes. Nobody else. And I think the people in the world, especially in the kingdom of God and in the church that are, you know, influential, not necessarily that they're like 
better at their gift than anybody else. I just think that they've learned how to surrender it mm -hmm. more than most because they're operating out of just like, this is just what I do. Yep. This is my rightful response to the revelation of Christ and Christ crucified in my life. And so this is the song that came out of it. This is the devotional or the book that I wrote out of the, this is just my rightful response. Yes. And I, every time I feel like it's time to do it again, I just learn how to surrender it all over again. If I can say yes every day and stay submitted, there's no limit to what the Lord can do through my life. But you know, we tend to chase so many other things that our eyes, <laughs> our flesh love to be able to applaud or, you know, want to be. And, um, time and time again, it ends up leaving you really hollow yeah. and really, really empty. When it comes to songs, uh, there's a story, there's a great worship leader out there, songwriter guy named Chris McClarney. There's a story of his where he had been serving at his local church for years, been really trying to, you know, grow as a songwriter, find a bit of a moment of breakthrough when it came to his songs, you know, hit a wall feeling like nobody really liked what he was doing. So one day he's praying, he's in his office and he had this like, all of his songs kind of typed out, you know, chord charts, pulled them all out and put them on the desk and just said, God, God, like, I want, I, would you give me the songs of heaven? I feel like I'm trying to, but nothing's working. Lord, give me, give me the songs of heaven, Lord. And after a minute, he felt like he heard the Lord respond to him and said, I, I don't, I don't need to give you, I already have the songs of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in it. I'm in the eternal song forever yeah. and ever. I want your song. <laughs> hmm. wow. Give me your song. Yeah. That is what I'm looking for you to offer up to me. And so I, that always inspires me because it's like a lot of the things that we're asking God for, they're already in our hands. Yeah. yeah. We just actually need to take notice of it and just learn to love it. Mm -hmm. Before we, if God, if, if God wants to give you influence that's global, awesome. But make no mistake don't get it twisted if you can't learn to love what's already entrusted yeah. to you how are you ever going to learn to love something that's like far beyond you know your reach of you know authority at the moment i've got authority today am yep. i using it am yep. i stewarding it am i caring am i tending to it am i guarding it with the things that are coming through my life if i'm not i'm praying prayers that god's like dude i'd love to do that for you man but bro, can we just get back to square one for a yeah, second? Yeah. Like just obey what I asked you to do today. Mm -hmm. Like just don't do that anymore. You're still doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're asking for this, but I'm just saying stop doing that. It, if I can't look inward and be like, God, what? Start with me. Um, why would I ask for the world? Mm -hmm. Why would I? What good is it to gain the world if I lose my soul? Yeah. yeah. God ain't gonna give you the world, bro. If you haven't first tended to your soul. That's so good. Because He loves you too much to leave you to yourself. We will self destruct. And look at the last, you know, five years of, of church. Mm -hmm. You will self-destruct yes. if you've gone for the world without taking care of your soul. That's scripture, man. And if it's gospel, it's going to be true every single yeah. time. Yeah. It's, it's one of the, you know, I feel like, especially in the West, and I love, you know, I'm not a west civilization hater i sure. like i like living here of you course. know yeah praise god that's yeah, great um <laughs> but i think Lord. we you know a lot of times we are the product of the culture that we live in and in in christianity i think sometimes can get really compartmentalized where you know it be when it's so cultural it's like it just becomes another aspect of our lives mm. and so we have our family and we have our friends we have our job we have our hobbies and then we have church um, and when that happens, that then all of a sudden it's how do I steward church and then nothing else matters. Right. And I think that's when you get people that yeah. are great, you know, communicators they they serve all the time at church and then they, <coughs> they go home and they have a terrible marriage and yeah. absent parents and, yeah. and all this unhealth. But that's, that comes when we have this separated, divided yeah. lens of everything yeah. versus having an actual biblical worldview right. of like, Hey, God cares more about my marriage than he does about my preaching. Amen. Yeah. He, care, he cares more about how I steward Amen. my relationships yes. and the people in my life more than my, my ministry strategy and, yeah. and growth on a, on a Thursday night and, yeah, yeah. and all of that. And so, but what happens is we are a product of this, this type of culture where we, it's easy to separate it into yeah. a thing yeah. because you can have work separated from everything yeah. else. You can have hobbies separated, but like, that is the essence of everything. It so it's, it has to be the lens that we look through. And I, I love Jesus always taught about the kingdom, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He didn't talk about culture. 
he talked about the kingdom, the kingdom yes. of heaven. And I think yeah. it's so important that when we just walk through the lens of like, okay, I, I'm a kingdom person. I'm a kingdom people. Uh, that That is who I'm called to be. And then everything in our world should align within that kingdom. Mm-hmm. And it's all just, I'm a kingdom minded person. My family is in the kingdom. My job is in the kingdom. My church is in the kingdom. When there's a separation, I think that's just when we're like, yep. That's, that's when we've lost sight of everything, you know? That's really yeah. good. I, um, you know, you, you were talking a little bit before about excellence and I'm a big excellence person. Something I, that I say with our leaders is, you know, we'll always be excellent, but we won't be Martha, you mm. know? So like we, but I'm a big on, yes, let's have all the best lights. Let's yep. have all the best transitions. Let's yep. have haze and create an environment and all that. That is a, you know, something that I feel like more so lately yeah. because of social media and all this and people love criticizing and hating of people like, we don't need that. Like we don't need the lights. We right. don't need right. electric guitars. You know, I talked to this guy that came to uh, our service and, you know, it, it was actually, you know, he actually came and we're like, oh, how'd you hear about it? And he's like, oh, I'm a part of a, a part of a group message on Instagram where we don't like your church. <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here. You know, because one of my things as well as, and I got this from Luke Barnett, which I thought was awesome. And he says, if people don't like you because of your position, you can't change that. Mm -hmm. Don't change your position. He goes, but aim to never be disliked for your disposition. So good. And I think that was so, so, you know, he's like, oh, we have a group message and we don't like your church. And I'm like, oh, well, bro, I'm actually, I'm glad you're here. Like, I'm glad I'm, you know, thanks for giving it a shot and checking it out, you know? And so after service, you know, I found out that he was like, you know what? You know, he said, hey, the, the the word was good. It was this. He goes, but I don't agree with like the way that you guys do worship. I don't agree with the electric guitars and the drums and all of that. Sure. So so I have a I have an opinion and a perspective on that. But I'm curious, you guys, because uh, yeah. obviously this is your life and what you do all the time on, on that criticism in the mm. modern church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, so much of it really is like preference. I've learned mm-hmm. like there really is no like right way yeah, yeah. when it comes to yeah. the practicals of it. I grew up, my dad's a church planner and I've been in big churches and I've been in rooms of like, you know, if 25 people showed up on a Sunday, like it's a good day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And you know, floor wedges with an acoustic guitar that I just can't keep in tune. And you know, my volunteer older lady that plays keys is just really struggling with, <laughs> the court chart. Yeah, just, we're just we're struggling well we're fighting a good fight if i can just get anybody to just like you know but man that's where that's where i was shaped uh-huh. that's where god yeah. like molded me into who i am it's it's those moments that made me who i am and so bro i i'm a firm believer man like if you got an attitude and guitar but you got a pure heart the lord will, lord will show up mm-hmm. and he'll do some beautiful beautiful things if you've got an incredible facility with a really polished band, but you got a pure heart, he's going to yep. do some really beautiful yep. things. Absolutely. Clean hands and pure hearts, they shall ascend the hill of the Lord. Yep. And when your heart, when your spirit is clean and your heart's pure, God can do anything, man. Mm-hmm. So good. He can do anything. And those are the things that I think really, they're attractive. Those things attract the spirit of God. Yeah. When there is a purity, when there's a holiness, when there is an honor. We talked about all the time, like, you know, the, the man or woman of God, you know, operating out of the office in which they're called to, whether they're the prophet, the teacher, the preacher, whatever. When there's honor towards that person and the gift on their life, you're pulling the best out of them because you're honoring the gift of God on their life. I think it's the same with Jesus. Mm-hmm. When we honor Jesus, when we honor the Father, when we honor the precious Holy Spirit, <laughs> we're creating a runway yeah. for his power, his glory, his yeah. presence to show up in the room. Cause you're pulling down heaven totally. with an honor for the sacrifice, the faithfulness, just who he is and what he's done. So when it comes to worship and comes to the methods, styles, and preferences, bro, it varies all across yeah. global culture. At the end of the day, I'm just looking for a humble spirit, yeah, you know, 100%. or a humble heart that just says, whatever this is, I've done the best I could do with yeah. it. Yeah. And I did it to worship you, man. I think God honors that as we honor him. And the preparation that that's brought forth, do we sometimes you know maybe get a little too far on either side? Hundred <laughs> percent. Are we sometimes a little too crazy and theatrical? Hundred percent. Are we sometimes a little too like self righteous in our simplicity? One hundred percent. Yes. It becomes hills that people want to die on for better or for worse right. when it comes to like you know cultural moments, 
popular culture, whatever it might be, trends and you know things are going to come and go at the end of the day. What got us here, we were it was revealed to us. <laughs> a savior yep. that could save us from our sin. And we've been forgiven, saved, yep. and now we're set apart. We're trying to see the kingdom of God advance on the earth. How does the kingdom of God advance on the earth? It's through his church. Yep. How does the glory of God get released into the earth? It's through the church. It's what he died for. It's what he's coming back for. It's the bride. And so if it's a full band, full orchestra, you got a, 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 a symphony, an orchestra down in the pit, whatever yeah, your yeah, vibe yeah, is, yeah. bro. If your ministry is under the Lord and it's helping the bride be more beautiful, mm -hmm. more glorious, more uh, spotless and wrinkle free to be ready for the coming of her king, I say go for it, dude. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, I totally agree with that. And obviously being a part of a church that does value those things of production and that nature. You know, I, I, always, I always like to give the analogy um, because I had somebody that was a, a student that I was meeting with and, and I said, you know, when I was a broke college student, you know, and I'm eating top ramen every day, you yeah. know, and if, if Jesus showed up at my door and said, Hey, I would love to spend dinner with you yeah. tonight. Right. Yeah. And he goes, I'll be back at five o'clock. And then he leaves, you know, that whole time I'm like, what am I going to, what am I going to serve at dinner? You yeah. know, and yeah. if I'm in my poor, you know, I'm like, all I can afford is chicken and rice. And I cook up some chicken and rice. I think Jesus comes and, and he sits down and he's super happy, yep. like to spend a meal with me. Yep. At the same time, you know, if today where, you know, I'm, we're by no means rich, but I have more money than I did in college. Yeah, and let's yeah. say Jesus shows up on my door and tells me and Adrian, hey, I'm a, I want to have dinner with you at 5 p.m. and he steak, leaves. Bro. I'm getting, I'm going to the yeah. market. Yeah. I'm getting the prime rib. 100%. I'm getting everything, potatoes yeah. and sides and yes. whatever drinks that Jesus wants. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I think it's, it's a matter of, you know, we, we just give our best. Yes. And yeah. I think that Jesus honors that and he yes. loves it yes. and it, it comes from a place. So like, yeah, I, I know it's easy when you're looking at a on Instagram and you see this grand spectacle and it's yeah. like, eh, this is all about them. Like yeah. I mean, it's easy to say that, totally. but at the same time, if we have the resources, why not create an environment where it's like, this is the, this is the best that we can do totally. to show the honor and yeah. the glory and the worship that God deserves. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's all about where you're at in it. I mean, it's like the widow with the two mites that Jesus looked at and was like, wow, you have given more than any of these 100%. people. And then it's the rich young ruler that Jesus is like, you have all this money. Are you willing to give it? Totally. You know, so I think it does have to do from a pure heart, but yeah. not to say that one model is really good and one model is really bad. Not at all. I think the majority of churches in the world are, you know, congregations less than like 200, 150 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that. And so when it comes to even like how that informs, like how I write songs, how that informs like, you know, just ministry. You know, when God starts to give some sort of an influence to your ministry that goes outside of the faithfulness you've given to your four walls, you do, you're not writing it because like, oh, I hope that works there, but you, you're, you're wanting to serve. Yep. Like I want this to serve. And when it comes to worship, which in my opinion is the highest form of music in the earth, mm -hmm. high praise is done unto the high King of heaven. Um, when it comes to that, I view myself as a servant before I'm an artist. So I'm here to serve the Lord and to serve his people. Yeah. Not my artistic preferences or my, you know, opinion on boundary breaking music. I, I am here to serve him and serve his people. And if that ends up being something really cool and innovative and creative, sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, but if that ends up being a, a couple chords with us just singing the same thing over and over again for 10 minutes that just has the power of God on it, then I'm down with that too. Yeah. But, you know, to really truly understand and know that like, you know, some people out there, um, they're not gonna get the lights, camera, action. That's okay. Um, I think spirit and truth worship finds its place in every human heart because mm -hmm. that's what we were created from. It's what we're created for. Yeah. That's what we're that's going really back to. We all have a shape, a void in us that the spirit and truth worship God asks us to give him finds a home for yeah. in our hearts and souls. And that transcends genre, that transcends style, transcends if there's an electric guitar or an or a B3 Hammond organ, whatever your vibe is, all of that transcends. When God shows up in a room, 
nobody's really mindful anymore of like what my preference was. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed by his glory, dude. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. manifest presence of God showed up in this room today. Nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. I'm just here for you. Yep. I want to bless you. I want to honor you. What can I do that you would want to dwell here? Please don't go. Yeah. This is like heaven on earth. And I think that's, we prepare, we do our best. We steward with excellence, whether it's with millions of dollars or it's a couple hundred bucks to pull off this little night of, you know, worship at my backyard, my church, whatever it is, or something just medium and mundane in the middle. Like if you're just there to host the King of glory, yeah. to make way, prepare the way for the coming of the King, um, Jesus does a really good job at drawing all men unto him yes. when he's just lifted up, man. Yep. So that's really good. So good. Um, we can kind of end on this, this, I'm sure there's people that are going to be watching or listening that they would say, okay, I have a song in my heart. I, I want to be on the worship team. I want to lead. I want to serve. And, and what would be your piece of advice to them or just some counsel generally of where they're at right now versus, you know, the dream, how to, how to go from the dream that God has put in their heart to actually seeing it come to fruition in their life? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would look at David in the Bible, right? That's, that's a pretty good example of someone being anointed and blessed to do something mm -hmm. and it doesn't start it for years. Yeah. It's like yeah. a, a it's a process. Um, you know, I heard a teaching one time of the different anointings of David, right? Like David was anointed for king, but he wasn't king in that moment. He went through a process yeah. of, of seasons of life. Yeah. And not saying that, you know, I want to write a song and it's going to take you 20 years. Mm -hmm. sure. But I mean, it's a good practice to just look at, you know, scripture and not necessarily put yourself in that person's shoes because I'm not David. You yeah. Know? But to, to look at his example and kind of just see, oh, how did he steward these moments? Like, how did how did he spend time with God? Like, how are these how do these psalms? How can I re relate these psalms to the story of David? And where was he at, yeah. at the time? Um, I think it's it's always great just to go back to scripture. Yeah, no, hundred um, percent. I I would encourage you, like, um, don't be in a hurry. Yeah. To um, you know try and expedite or fast track your process. Stay as hidden as you can for as long as you can. Mm -hmm. um, let the timing of the Lord be made perfect in your process. There's no one size fits all story that applies to everybody, but there is a rhythm of grace that I think each of us have been given a measure yeah. to abide by. And if you can get really good at recognizing um, the voice of God through taking in the word of God, I think the things that come out of you are going to be very godly. Yeah. And they're going to be things that are relevant to people in your sphere of influence because that is the heart of God. It's people. He wants to use you to reach your community. He wants to use you to reach people in your church. He wants to use you to start a move of God wherever you've been given totally. authority and responsibility to be. But don't rush the process it takes for him to really mark your life. Yep. What's, what is your message? What is your testimony? That, that is your platform. That is your song. Mm -hmm. That's your ministry, your, you know, the theme of your life. You find it in those moments of being anonymous. Yeah. You find it in those moments of like, nobody really cares yet, but I've found a contentment in the person of Jesus, the fellowship with his Holy Spirit and the um, fulfillment of just being known by the Father. I'm a son or a daughter of the king. I'm just getting comfortable in the identity of who he is in me. That way, whenever the time comes for the curtain to open yep. up on your life, there is a foundation of the Lord for you to be sustained by. Because uh, there will be hard days. There will be moments where you'll release a song and nobody gives a flip. <laughs> there will be moments where you're like, man, I really thought this was the one. Yeah, yeah. And like literally nobody cares. <laughs> it's in those moments you need to, the Lord to be your foundation. Yeah. yeah. To not get your identity <laughs> lost in it, to not get your motives lost in it, um, and to truly just be content. Like if, if truly this was just for the Lord, yes. would this be yes. enough for me? And if you can't answer that question yet, just stay hidden with the yes. Lord so he can bring you to that place of formation to where 
Are we perfect? No. But can we be made more like him till we see him forever? Yes. And when you can get into that likeness, that transformation, um, you really do get to a place where it is uh, no longer I that lives, but Christ alive in me. Yeah. And when that can be said of your character, um, I think it's really, really going to be um, a fun season to watch what God wants to do with the work of your hands, the song of your heart, the ministry that's on your life. And let him, let the chips fall where they need to fall. Yep. Let him do what he wants to do with it. If you go viral, if you go platinum, you're the New York Times bestsellers list, whatever it is that you're passionate about, um, like let the Lord make you famous if he wants you to be famous. At the end of the day, what sobers my mindset is the thought of eternity. Yeah. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Let that be said of me in my marriage, with my children, with my heart, with what he's given me to do with today. And I think my songs, my ministry, you know, my albums, my whatever, that kind of takes care of itself in the end. So don't rush the process, stay faithful in the hidden spaces and watch what the Lord can do. There's no limit. That's so good. That's so great. Good. Um, I appreciate you guys being on the podcast. I know that you have an EP coming out. I do. Uh, and so what date is it coming out? What's it called? Yeah, it's coming off, uh, coming out August the 9th. And so it is a five song EP. It's called Guard the Glory. And uh, these are songs that, you know, I've written over the last couple of years that um, just really the Lord kind of revealed to me. They weren't for an SCU or for another church or even for my church. These were songs that he had given me to carry because uh, they were songs that had been birthed out of kind of my signature revelations of what God's done over this, this last season. And so songs of, you know, just surrender songs uh, that really are a cry. Lord, make me more like you. Mm -hmm. it, you're holy. I want to be holy. And how do you guard the glory that God reveals to you in your life? It's staying holy and it's staying pure and righteous and true worship that he won't deny. And so really excited about it. It's my first kind of solo venture mm -hmm. I've ever done. Um, but uh, it feels like God's put a wind at my back and his peace in my heart to release it for such a time as this. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm sure that It'll bless so many, um, you know, there's an anointing on your life. And so if you're watching or listening, make sure you guys go check out that EP when it comes out. It's going to be incredible. But again, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. Thank you. Uh, I know honored. this is going to be a blessed conversation for so many people and I'm privileged to be sitting with you guys. So thank you. Appreciate you, man. What an incredible conversation that was. I hope that it blessed you. And we're going to be linking everything below, whether you want to download uh, David Cook's new EP, whether you want um, to follow him on Instagram or social media and follow along with what he's doing. Um, it really was a, a, a mature, good, biblical conversation about what worship is. And he's the real deal, guys. Guys, he's incredible. Um, he's a man of God, um, a great songwriter. And so um, I, I hope that you were blessed, as blessed as I was in that. Um, also, as always, if you guys want to support the ministry, um, that's how we're able to do these podcasts and continue to preach the good news online. Um, there's going to be a link below as well if you want to partner with the ministry and become a monthly partner or give a one-time donation. Everything that's given goes so that we can advance the gospel, so that we can preach the gospel online, have incredible guests like this on. So if you want to support uh, Spencer Nakamura Ministries, go ahead and uh, click the link below and it'll take you to a site where you can become a partner or give one time. Thank you so much to our partners. I have to thank them every single time because you guys are the reason that we are able to do this. Um, that the reason that I'm able to do this. I'm blessed by you guys continually. And so thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that's following along in the ministry. I love you all and I'll see you next time on the podcast.